All right, we'll give it just a few moments to let folks join us. Put some uh, text in the chat. Uh oh, we have some, we have, is everyone seeing the texts in their view? I'm not sure. Uh, I think you can, you can choose hide captions or show captions. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Good evening and welcome to tonight's live online author event with Greenlight Bookstore. I'm Jessica, I'm the owner of Greenlight and we are thrilled to host tonight's event celebrating the release of the Best American Poetry 2023. We have a truly amazing lineup of poets with us tonight to read. So I wanna very quickly turn things over to your hosts, series editor, David Lehman and this year's editor, Elaine Equi. So first, just some very quick housekeeping things. In our Zoom webinar tonight, you'll be able to see and hear the speakers, but they can't see and hear you. However, you can interact with the authors and fellow attendees in the chat. You can access the chat by clicking on the icon that looks like a speech balloon. Feel free to post where you're joining from and your appreciation for the poems as we go along. I'll also be posting information about each of tonight's poets, as well as other information in the chat, so feel free to take a look at that. And very importantly, tonight's featured book, The Best American Poetry 2023, is available for sale from Greenlight Bookstore. As a thanks for attending tonight's virtual event, we are offering 10% off when you order the book through Greenlight's website. Just enter the coupon code GreenlightEvents10 in the coupon code section at checkout online, and you can pick it up at the bookstore on Fulton Street or have us ship it anywhere in the country. I'll drop that link and the coupon code in the chat in a little bit as well. Now I'll introduce our host tonight. David Lehman is the series editor of The Best American Poetry, which he initiated in 1988. He's also the editor of the Oxford Book of American Poetry. His books of poetry include The Morning Line, New and Selected Poems, When a Woman Loves a Man, and The Daily Mirror. And if I can add a personal note, I was in David Lehman's class as an undergraduate at NYU about 25 years ago, and I've never forgotten it. So it's great to be back in the room with him and all these amazing poets tonight. Elaine Equi is the author of 10 collections of poetry, including VoiceOver, which won the San Francisco State Poetry Award, Ripple Effect, New and Selected Poems, which was a finalist for the LA Times Book Award and shortlisted for the International Griffin Poetry Prize, and most recently, The Intangibles from Coffeehouse Press. So I'll let David and Elaine tell you a little bit more about this wonderful volume and what to expect this evening. Elaine, please take it away. Um, thank you, Jessica. Uh, thank you and welcome to everyone joining us. <clears throat> Thank you to Greenlight Books for hosting. Thank you to Scribner for making such a beautiful book. And thank you to all of these extraordinary poets that I admire so much for being here to read their poems from the anthology. <clears throat> Maybe I should have some water. My throat is scratching. Okay, before we begin, I just want to say I'm sure everyone is heartbroken over what's going on in the world right now. It is hard to be in a celebratory mood. But if poetry can contribute anything at a moment like this, hopefully it can help remind us even in some small way of our sense of humanity. So I've been a fan of the Best American series since it began in 1988 with a volume guest edited by John Ashbery. I'm pretty sure that I was at that launch having just moved from Chicago to New York and it made poetry seem very glamorous and desirable. As someone who teaches, I've used Best American in my writing classes many times to spark discussions and as a source of prompts, it's a great resource. I've found new poets to read in the pages of Best American. I've found new journals to submit my poems to and on a few occasions, I was lucky enough to have a poem of mine included. I will confess that I often secretly wished I could guest edit one. So thank you, David Lehman, for making my dream come true. It was a tremendous honor and a great pleasure to work with you. We had so much fun putting this book together. In my intro, I say that reading and writing poetry is for me a spiritual practice. I know this might be a turnoff for some as it can get mixed up with religion, but I don't mean it that way. For me, spirit is something broader than that, something that poetry puts me in touch with that is much bigger than myself. 
poetry touches on the intangible, the unsayable qualities of everyday life that must be said. When choosing poems for this anthology, I tried not to look for specific things, not to favor certain styles or subject matter. I took an aphorism by the great Joe Brainerd for my guide. He says, poetry is that certain something we so often find missing. It sounds simple, but it's also profound. I can honestly say that every poem in this collection gave me that sense of discovery and revelation. Uh, I'm going to stop now because we have lots of poets to get to and turn it over to David Lehman. I think he has some things to tell us too. David. I just wanted to um, welcome all, all of you um, and our audience in general and how wonderful it is to, to see the faces of the authors of the poems that Elaine chose for the 2023 volume of the best American poetry. I think she did a, a magnificent job. I, I love your poems and there are lots of us. So why don't we get started in alphabetical order and, uh, and enjoy our poems. Okay, I'm Ray Armantrout and I go first because my name starts with A. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much, Elaine and David, for choosing this poem, Fortune, for the book. It's in three parts, um, so I'm going to read the numbers of the parts. The first and the third have to do have something to do with childhood and childhood memories, and the second takes a detour. Okay, Fortune. One, it could have started like this. My mother took me to fabric shops when I was a kid. I would wander through the tall bolts dazed, reading fortunes in the colors. Two, white paper mache of the mock orange flower on its many stems. Lavender as an afterthought, necrotic, carried interest. Ochre, like sunset in LA like dehydration, the popular mauve gray, which blends indifference with innocence. Three, one is chosen above her sisters. One tells a troll to eat his brothers. An imp gives one the power to spin yellow into patronage. One frills a frill again and again, no in order, no as if. Um, uh, so now, I, now I'll jump in. Um, I'm gratitude for including me in this anthology, David and Elaine and, and um, Paul for publishing this uh, poem in New American Writing. Uh, I'll dedicate my poem, A Deafening Prayer, to um, the state of of conflict that uh, we're all experiencing, some some areas um, more directly than others, a deafening prayer, I a, a deafening prayer ignites ionized air, night's holy grail, night's only prayer, an autonomous prayer careens into autobardo speeds through HVO lanes flowing in the six directions, chanting a drone prayer, a rune prayer, Rumi's prayer, to co-pray a cocoon prayer in woodlands with rings, silent owl wings and invertebrate things, with ancient stone forces and surfaces and winding roads to root prayer, dew beads coat spider webs and pop-up mushroom stands we stand on at dawn while praying counting breath counting mala counting on goddesses to paw rosy earth for a rising prayer dust that hides the dare of prayer smudging sage and time to reveal prayer sliding doors the deals in prayer impossible to conceal the stridulating cicada prayer 
scratching their shells, their freedom bells, their undulating prayers. The murmuration of prayer flight crossing the empty, responsive prayer night. Wind as soul of the newly dead, its shroud, the foal it rides north-south to a magnetic center of decay. Death's portal prayer, our one way out, an erosion prayer, the rat's prayer, the hat prayer one wears to protect from cloudy moods. A prayer for opening or closing eyes. We watch our step as we tread on the sacred square prayer, the profane prayer, a Janus prayer rug with a gate to the star spritzing Milky Way lapped up by the temple cat that lodges near the root cellar prayer, a hate prayer, vote prayer, votive prayer, a passing prayer, flying prayer, snow flurry prayer, a furry prayer. Listen for the tiny prayer, one that flashes light, the blinding prayer, the binding prayer. Our first prayer, the prayer before we learn to speak, prayers etched on papyrus, parchment, on imprisoned flesh, toilet paper prayers, crying prayers, dying prayers, poppy fields of prayer, each prayer strapped to song, birthed from wind. The rhizome pride prayer that unselves prayers to molting feathers, father and mother prayer. Funeral pyre prayer, releasing prayer cares. A Gordon Knot Deus Ex Machina prayer. A common prayer, a humming prayer, a buzzing, pollinating pod prayer, a fertilizing prayer, broadcasting everywhere without exception. Thank you. So I'm up next. I'm sorry about my video here, I got locked into my last Zoom of Dick Clark's rock and roll Halloween dance party, and I don't know how to change it. Uh, so I have very three super short poems, shorter than what I've just said. The first one I'm changing, the original version in the book was shorter Russian poem, uh, but I've changed it to shorter Jewish poem. Actually, all three poems are the same. They're just different versions of it. So here is the Jewish version, shorter Jewish poems. Famine, plague, floods, rain, droughts, slavery, poverty, robberies, kidnappings, incest, patricide, fratricide, civil war invasions, tyrannies upon tyrannies. And then the dark times came. My second poem is called Pathetic Fallacy. Never mind there's no hole so deep you don't get banged when you hit bottom or that the zombies have overtaken the capital. I still hear nightingale songs every time I see pigeons nosediving in early morning hail whose icy spitballs remind me of paradise. And the last of the three is called Wry Sense of Humor. Wry is spelled R-Y-E. You don't have to be Jewish to send the salami to your boy in the Navy. Oh, hi, I'm Leanne Brown. That was great, Charles. I'm gonna read a poem called That's American. It was published in the Brooklyn Rail. So thanks to Anselm and thanks for Elaine for choosing the poem. It's sort of an improvisation. Um, that's American. The place where Helen's tears grow in fields under electricity towers. The way we are always having to run speed tests 
That's American where you can get shot for crossing out a word in the land of the free and the home of the knave. That's American where you can actually eat the fungal network where you can either have it delivered or be the delivery service or go into unpaid labor and have to go back to work the next week. That's American. Look at those clouds. When we learn from each other without even meaning to, that's the American persona living in a mobile home. Down the road from the store, there's a wild cat living in the grass. That's American and invasive at the same time that crawls on hands and knees through the glittering piles of glitter that will never go away, even in a million years. They just keep making more of it. That's American, shiny and undulating sea to shining sea, indulgent, thus thinking herself free from responsibility. That's American, how that works. That's American Airlines, packing people in like sardines. That's American pie, you and I. It's so American to roast marshmallows made of chemicals. American made cars make a strange sound when crushed at the dump, but at least they'll pay you $300 to do it. Great. So I guess I'm next. I'm Maxine Chernoff and I really want to thank Elaine Equi and David Lehman. And I also want to thank Bradford Morrow for including me in Web Conjunctions from which the poem came. Um, can I ask you to turn off your sound or something? Because we're echoing here. Thank you. Um, so my poem is small and um, about birds. And let me find it. Okay. Um, called the Songbird Academy. Butterfly in aspic, or is it amber? Rude awakening of green and the tree under which someone said, there is little to say. But in the air, whispered speech, noise and celebration, grief and regret, rush of water and drills, trains slurring through beaded wings sunlit daylit travel upward unsung by night and through the air a voice another another thank you thank you maxine thank you uh, my name is boris jerluk uh uh, I want to thank Elaine and David and Jackson Lears of Raritan for accepting this poem. Uh, it's called Days of the Races, and the epigraph is spoken by Groucho in uh, A Day at the Races. Either he's dead or my watch has stopped. <laughs> Away they go with their outlandish names, saddled with human baggage, desperate wagers, enough to make a thoroughbred go lame, be it a strapping colt or spry old stager. Away they go with Monday in the lead, and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday gaining speed. Friday and Saturday, poor things are off the bridle, while Sunday, bless its heart, is simply idle. Some like to be there, tremble at the crack of every whip, eat dust, bathe in lather, and feel the press of flesh. Me, I would rather keep my distance, make my bets off track. Each week, I pony up a little dough, although I seldom win or place or even show. Thank you. That was rad, Boris. Um, thank you, David, Elaine, Greenlight Books. Um, I'm really honored to be in a grid with y'all, these cool poets. Uh, like Maxine's poem, this is also a bird poem um, and yet another pandemic poem. This is called Night Herons. All day long, you ring yourself out, work virtually, go nowhere. Brain exclusively tuned to end times music till twilight arrives to fold you in blue pleats of evening. A flock of night herons flaps past across the sky or your mind, 
It's the same either way. Long closeted thoughts rise with them, winging out from daytime roosts to forage swamps and wetlands, to nest in groups. Black crowned birds who croak like crows swoop low over mangroves. The whir of wings, real or imagined, blurs trivial things. Strange time songs declare doom looms. Everyone's muzzled, mired in dread. The future's not mutual, it's mute or dead. Everybody misses everybody. Try to write it out. The night herons seek what the sun will summon us to, a prayer to be spared after endless seeming exile. I shall be satisfied when I wake with thy likeness. The night herons keep flying toward a psalm's promise, toward all tomorrow's garlands. Thank you. Hi, I'm Paul Hoover, and thanks, Elaine and uh, David, for uh, including me in this wonderful anthology. I'm having a little trouble reading uh, because it's eight-point type, so I'm going to have to just lean very close. It's called Admonitions Afternoons. Oh, the mattress fallen upon the freeway. I, I need better light, I'm sorry. Uh, this is getting ridiculous. Uh, so anyway, uh, oh, the mattress fallen upon the freeway, releasing its padding in uh, five miles of, of traffic. Uh, I'm sorry. I have to go find some light. Maxine and I were in the same room in the project room. So uh, I can read now. Oh, the mattress fallen upon the freeway, releasing its padding in five miles of traffic stalled as if before a shrine. Oh, the stock option and the shitting dog, the milk spilling across the kitchen floor, and oh, that troublesome meeting at school. Oh, the skateboarder who sings in the choir with spider tattoos that crawl up his neck in Excelsis Deo. Oh, the march of final things toward the leaning cathedral, the blue abyss in the shape of a wine glass, and oh, the flower I found. Oh, the ambient sound of crying and laughter, kindness misunderstood as scorn, and love that forgives all woe. Oh, houses that are bruises, where the shadow lingers of the one who lived there, and that box of photos under the bed in which he was held dear. Oh, the love that was missing, and that he lost again and found again, and finally drowned in consternation. Oh, the necessary step in the wrong direction. Oh, well, and oh, dear. And don't worry, I love you. Everything's all right. Oh, the word ah exclaimed in the woods and leaves beating against a branch as if to fly. Oh, no. Oh, the mystery number zero snuggling up to infinity with the others of its kind. Hello, I'm Patricia Spears Jones, and I am really happy to be back in Best American Poetry. Thank you, Elaine. <laughs> it only took him 22 years. Okay, so this is a poem that's dedicated to the late uh, critic, um, musician, uh, bon vivant, and uh, all things. Um, Black cultural Greg Tate, uh, who like me loved James Brown. And this is written as a, I've been writing a series called The Devil's Wife. And here she is. She explains broken 40 wide, 45s.
And I printed mine out so I could. The Devil's Wife Explains Broken 45s. There was a time, James Brown sang, and I want to dance, but that causes the devil to prance upon me, then lash higher his liege around my waist and squeeze me till my voice box almost shatters. You're a doll, he says, as he smashes our turntable, laughing at the clatter ancient 45 RPMs make as they break treasures from a lost last century when sweet soul music elevated our scissoring feet. How he hated haloed afros radiant with pride and that slide away from suffering. The devil hates black genius, made him work harder than hard to render it witless and dope stone. He hates having to move one iota out of his trifling comfort zone. Can't I listen to one piece of my heart untarnished by his guile? Child, soul music is now in limbo and me bruised again, cleaning up those broken 45s. But somewhere on the other side of this sad kingdom, another woman augurs the audio and James Brown sings, there was a time. Well, that was great, Patricia. I'm Vincent Katz. Uh, really honored to be here with all these great poets. And it's a pleasure to hear them all. Thank you to Elaine and David and in memory of Bob Hershon, the publisher of Hanging Loose, where this poem appeared. A Marvelous Sky. I don't need to buy any records, but there is a record store. I don't want to play chess, but there are still chess shops. I don't really want to pay for anything right now. The sky is blue, the air is warm, and youth is the tenor. Most people are not excited by their lives, but there's something in the air that might give them a lift. The younger they are, the easier it will be. But there's youth enough for everyone today. A side street provides protected solitude. Suddenly, music is in my ears again. Music reaches body, brain, and heart simultaneously. The ones one wants to reach are reached by music. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Do you hear me? Okay. Um, my name is Miha Kinas. I have been living in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina for the past nine years. I'm very happy to be here. I'll read my poem. It's called Three Shrimp Boats on the Horizon. Moon, white seagulls. Heights, cirrus, horizon. Air, water, wishes. Turn, shades, depth. Tones. Mirrors, wait, listen, distance, whisper. Prussian blues, strings, cries, lost crystal. Rock, paper, scissors. Thank you. Mesmerizing poem, Miho, thank you. And thanks to everybody for reading such moving 
um, and available poems. And to Elaine for choosing my poem and David for shepherding the entire thing for so many years. Uh, my poem, and I want to thank Harvard Review for having the temerity to publish my poem. It's a quasi sonnet, an engorged, overstuffed sonnet from a sequence of these called Stubble Archipelago that's coming out from Semiotext in February 2024. The poem is called Misread Master Craftsman. Misread Master Craftsman as nastier craftsman. To heck with rigor, I shouted in a microphone, retort broadcast across the college green. Large featured prof, the hurried type that harrows me, mastered the toy store's revolving door. Baptize my green sponge, cane, Cane wipes regular household surfaces. The blue sponge, able, reserved for washing dishes, holds sway. Jackie and Lee? Disrespectful analogies anoint domestic day. Dreamt I drafted a tiny three-chaptered Jewish book about La Ceremonie, starring Isabelle Huppert. Two spermatozoa commas on the ascending elevator's copper annunciation screen. Tempestuous behavior of daffodils arranged within a fenced rectangle. Bird cries befriend me on West 23rd Street without knowing who I am, without caring whether I occupy a single body or several. Bird carillons emerge from multiple bird bodies, none I've separately acknowledged. Reprieve from saying hello to each individual creature gives spring its identity annulling oomph. Dreamt a one-legged psychoanalyst took assiduous, opinionated notes while I recounted my troubled history. He divided my psyche into threes. Young woman reads Fitzgerald's The Beautiful and Damned as she waits in a flower district traffic island for the green walk sign to push her back into ordinary uncertain life, beautiful or damned. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. And thank you, David and Elaine, for including me as well. And I'm honored and grateful to be a part of this group tonight. And and I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah, as for my poem, two story. It's called I Meant To. I meant to put those 63 names and email addresses in the BCC blind copy space, not the CC copy space. I meant to send it to him, not her. I meant to swallow, not drool. On the computer, my lap, your sleeve, my arm, the floor, that first edition in the drawer. I went to I meant to walk and move with that feline grace someone once said I had, not wobble and stagger like an old wino. I meant to hit the Y, not the T, the H, not the G, the V, not the V. Return, not send. Amen, amends, not amen. I meant to stand up straight, not bend. To sit upright, not slouch. To not fall down and get stuck between the couch and a hot pipe that burned my back. Like the prolonged sting of a fierce slap. I meant to stay 29 or 49. 
I'll be 79 turning 80 in May, this way, drooling and stumbling and unable to make a fist with my right hand or grasp a utensil in the proper way, but instead need foam additions to the handles for my one or two fingers that can still curl without help. I meant to be the exception to obviously aging or a long gone legend by now, not a bent over drooling old man who still often feels like a woman inside. But I'll accept what I'm left with for as long as I can and still be grateful for all that I've been and am. Whatever else it is, poetry is a celebration of being, memory, dream, hope, and desire. And the poems we've been hearing and will hear this evening are, are a testament to that uh, sublime function of poetry. I thank everyone who contributed their wonderful poems to this anthology. Elaine Equi uh, chose my poem, Traces. I know where I was on this day in 1967 because I wrote a poem that day and made eight slash eight slash 67 its tale in the manner of Frank O'Hara as if poetry were a diary and you could put anything in a poem, like living alone at age 19, reading The Great Gatsby, memorizing the last pages, that's my Middle West. My job to deliver the mail that summer in the tenements east of Broadway, where a woman in a nightgown tipped me, and the pale brick buildings on Cabrini Boulevard beside the Hudson. I woke up to the sound of the Beatles, strawberry fields forever, and ate hot dogs with mustard, sauerkraut, and a half sour pickle at the deli next to the Alpine movie house. Though I put none of these things in traces, the poem I wrote on August 8, 1967, which ended with, quote, the old plains of America's darkness and thank you hi i'm i'm Katha pollitt and i want to thank elaine and david and um the bookstore for this wonderful occasion for including my poem in this terrific volume that i'll be reading many many times and it's so great to hear so many people read um my poem is called brown furniture I wrote it because my best friend was being urged by another friend that she should throw out all her old furniture and get new furniture because old is bad. So this is my poem, Brown Furniture. Don't throw out that old chair. Someone said yes there. Listened to Brahms while it rained. Fell asleep over Das Kapital. Told a small child about King Alfred and the cakes. Don't be fooled by the dining table discreetly silent under its green cloth. Momentous events occurred there, all of which it remembers perfectly. A terrible silence was broken over cake and three ants sang a song about Romania. Not your ants, not important, they were there. Your living room still making history. All night the sofa gossips with the Turkish carpet which boasts to the glass-fronted bookcase about the fantastic voyages of its youth. These things remember so that we can forget. Who will love the old, if not the old? Thank you.
Am I supposed to do something now? I believe Jerome Sala is up next. Hi, I'm Jerome Sala. Uh, Elaine and I share a computer and many other things. Uh, so I'm going to use this computer to read. Uh, my poem is called, and thank you, Katha, for the poem. And thank you, Elaine and David, for including my poem in uh, this year's uh, Best American. My poem's called Something I've Not Bought. It's actually a rewrite of a W.S. Merwin poem uh, called Something I've Not Done. In Merwin's poem, uh, a destiny he hasn't fulfilled haunts him in every stanza. And in my modern translation of this, uh, somebody's been on the internet and hasn't bought a product and it, ha it haunts his internet life. Uh, something I've Not Bought after W.S. W. S. Merwin. Something I've Not Bought is following me. I see it in my Facebook feed, peeking out from the top of my email stream. The stream they promised they'd never sell, owned by a company I don't know well. Something I've not bought is following me, seen as I've not bought it again and again. I see the tracks of its ads like tears running down my screens. In the morning, it's there on my phone before breakfast. It seems to pop out of the void in a banner above my browser. I shrug off its warnings, tapping a gray tab that says close. In the evening before bed, it knows I've spent a, a whole day not buying it again and again. Not being a person, it doesn't take it personally. But if I ever click on it, I'll never be rid of it. It will inhabit the very soul of my machine demanding ransom unless I pay or exercise it through a search and destroy mission in my applications file. If I shrug it off, I know it'll be okay. A stranger waving at me from an ocean liner, I pretend not to see. Thank you. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Okay, good. Anyway, it's a pleasure to be here, and it's always a thrill to be among poets. And I thank David Lehman for having done this for so many years, and Elaine Equi for for mysteriously choosing my poem. So, this is a this is a I called this. I've written a number of these. There, I call them blues villanelles, and this is called "All the Time Blues Villanelle." Hard to watch somebody lose their mind. Maybe everybody should just go get stoned. My father said it happens all the time. I knew a woman lost her soul to wine. But who doesn't live with their life on loan? Shame to watch somebody lose their mind. Don't you gotta wonder when people say they're fine, given what we're given, I guess they act and groan. I think I used to say that all the time. When my parents died, I coined a little shrine and thought about all the stuff they used to own. Felt like I was going to lose my mind. Used to have a friend who smiled all the time. Then he started saying he could hear the devil moan. Hate to see a brother lose his goddamn mind. It doesn't matter how you pull, the hours break the line. Mirror, mirror on the wall. How come nobody's home? Broke my soul for real when my mother lost her mind. Tried to keep my head right, but sanity's a climb. Been working on the straight face. I guess my cover's blown. My father tried to tell me all the time. Had one last question, baby, but maybe never mind. After a while, 
even springtime starts to drone. Hard to see somebody lose their mind. My pop said, boy, it happens all the time. Thank you. Next up is Mitchell Siskind. How do I get it through? You're good, Mitch. Oh, I'm good? Yep. Okay. Thank you for having me. Uh, okay, a couple of things. Only death wows me. Big mansions, private yachts. I can appreciate that stuff but it doesn't wow me. Not even birth, because at first nothing is there, then something is there. But once it's there, it's like it's always been there, which doesn't wow me. With death, however, something is there, and then it isn't. But in a weird way, it's still there and maybe even more than before, like when you find the dead person's false teeth lying around. You know what else? Steve Jobs' last words were, wow, oh, wow, because he was so wowed by death, which I can completely understand, because like I said, only death wows me. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Mitch. I think it's my turn. I'm Jack Skelly. Uh, thank you, uh, Elaine and David and everyone at BAP 2023. And, for, and to Court Green, who published this poem, Green Goddess. Who made the salad? Whose tangy vinegar made me wince? Who played pouty Venus to my impudent Caesar? Who taught me to renounce meat? Who flowed forth lubricants? Who performed dark sacraments? Whose tart shrub tangled my tongue? Who with unctuous poses oiled me? Who received my verdant sacrifice? Who, as I reclined panting, poured herself into her dressing? Who lured me to the garden and dragged me into deep greens? Who instructed me on the use of the proper fork? Who inserted an oblong cucumber? Who shredded slender carrot sticks? Whose burning bush consumed the sky god's timbers, shaking his heavens to the rafters? Who roused me in damp chambers, dousing reasonable fires to consume knowledge raw? Who, at the crack of the vernal equinox, broke seasoned bread into bite-sized croutons? Who parted beet red vestments? Who swelled my painted cave beast, proud and pregnant? Who put me in the red pepper pink? Whose celestial power would I enviously drink? Who suckered me when I lay pallid? Or who made the salad? Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Amanda Smeltz. Um, thank you to David and Elaine for including me in this anthology. And it's a genuine honor to be in this virtual room with all of you, um, such illustrious writers. It's really, it's very special to me. Um, so this poem is called These Squatting Girls in Black Spandex. Um, it starts from an uncomfortable observation I made in the yoga class and spirals out into um, religious concerns from there. So. Um, yeah, these squatting girls in black spandex. These squatting girls in black spandex are trying to turn their gaze inward. When I crack the Bhagavad Gita, I can't find downward dog. No downward dog, 
or half lift, no crow, no humble warrior. Next pew over, an old woman files her nails. My mother fumes. Easter at the megachurch, my favorite silk banner is hung. It's shimmery pink with a purple silhouette of a dying man. I strap on my leather bra and boots, headed off to Burning Man. For 40 days, I writhe and flash and drape myself on scaffolding. A pastor at his dinner table expounded on gender and sacraments. A woman can no more consecrate than can this block of cheese. Thereafter, I did no more consecrating. A vine grew out of my forehead. Suckers and buds shot up out of my terrible hands and feet. A plastic sack bulges with Japanese beetles, each hooked on to the other. Shimmering jade and blue, but they don't know they're gonna die. In my house, we keep the old gods, shit talk, candor, and clarity. Now fetch me that branch tangled ram and think about what you've done. Thank you. Hi. Um, I, I also want to say that I'm delighted to be taking part today. Am I on? Am I coming through here? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, and uh, thank you to to David and Elaine for doing a great job. I also love those introductions and read them every year. And this year, I think, was probably the all time best two intros. So that was fun. So uh, today is All Souls Day, and I realize that this is a, an appropriate poem for All Souls uh, called Great Sizzle. Pour me another one, please. I raked all the leaves in the rain, and now I'm sore. My primal fear involves living in a dark forest made up of half sentences and embryonic cabbages. I was frolicking with my fairy godmother the other night when we suddenly were seized by a chronic inflammation of unbelief. The old postage stamps are licked, the eggs are beaten. I look for redemption and comfort food and the second coming of Elvis. A line was forming outside the darkened auditorium last night, just as the faithful began to chant, the worst is yet to come. I focus on the flowers in the vase in the living room, stinking up the house, knowing sooner or later our source network will expose our files. There is no way to get your secret back from the secret stealer. The soul is mysterious, they tell me. Put it in front of a camera and it explodes. Thanks. Great. Outstanding. Uh, th thank you all so much. Uh, beauty can be succinct. And brevity is the soul not only of, of wit, but of of great passion and intellect too. <laughs> and thank you, Jessica, for remembering uh, great poems at NYU. Uh, was that 20 years ago? May, possibly 25, but quite a few. Thank was... you, David, and thank you, Elaine, and thank you to all of these incredible poets for your words. Um, we will have the recording of this reading up on YouTube within the next couple of days if you'd like to revisit it. And of course, you can always buy the book and read them again and again. Thank you. Thank all so you. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you. everybody. Yeah, this is wonderful. You. you all work wonderful. Yeah, yeah, all it was a great good. reading. <laughs> Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Yeah, that was the yeah. best poetry. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, such a pleasure. A real pleasure. It was. Thank you again. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Elaine, and thank you David. For a drink. <laughs> thank you. This was great. Thank you. Thank you. See you Good night, soon. All. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.